Hi, this will be the first video in a series of videos on learning basic JavaScript. Okay, the goal of the video is to make a simple shopping cart. Okay, uh, I'll show you an example of it here. So the, uh, the goal is to make something that looks like this. Okay, so you should be able to uh, type in like a thing here, like an opinion. Like maybe that's something you want to add to your shopping cart. It's probably worth about two cents, so you'd put um, you'd put the number in there, and then you can click add item, and it'll add an opinion. If you add a second opinion, it shouldn't add a new item. Instead, it'll see that you already have an opinion in your cart, and it'll up the number to two. So if I add another one, you'll see this goes up to three, and then the cart shows a list of all the things in your cart. Um, it shows how many of the things, the quantity of the things, right? And then it shows the total uh, price for the thing. So actually it shows the price over here, and then it gives you the total price over here. So if I get six oranges and they're $1.29 each, then I, that costs seven seventy four, dollars right? At the bottom it shows the uh, total cost of everything in my cart. And then I have some UI elements over here, you know, where I can, you know, remove an apple from my cart. Um, I can add a couple oranges to the cart. I can remove one Frisbee. Actually, I don't even need four Frisbees. You really only need one, right? Um, and then, you know, if you want, you can set the number of opinions. And I'm full of opinions, so I'll make it, um, you know, like a million opinions or 10,000 or whatever that is, right? Okay, so uh, so anyway, that's, that's the goal. We're going to make one of these. It's all going to run with JavaScript. Um, we're going to talk about um, functions, variables, uh, returning a value from a function. We'll talk about um, using arrays and objects. And we'll also talk about how JavaScript works with the DOM. So as the program behind the scenes is running, it's also updating elements on the screen, right? So it's creating new items. So if I say a new item here, and it's worth the uh, 99 cents when I add it here you can see it gets added to the list and the, the screen updates right and we're, we'll talk about event listeners so when we click on these buttons or update the value in a field like maybe I have like five of these right when I update the value here it should update over here right and so we have an event listener that listens for that and then runs some code okay so this is our goal we'll go through this in a couple videos um, you know, and you can follow along, and there'll be some some challenges for you along the way. So, uh, and then this project too could be turned into a lot of things. It's kind of like a shopping cart you might see on a store or some website. It could be the shopping cart in a game, like if you have a game with some kind of economy. Um, this could easily be turned into a to-do list or um, any kind of list app. Okay. But anyway, the whole thing runs in JavaScript, and this is just essentially just a, a web page, okay? So uh, let's get started. So I'm going to go to my desktop here and uh, make a new folder called uh, Shopping Cart, okay? And I'll drag this folder on top of Visual Studio Code, and then it'll open that folder up as a project in Visual Studio, okay? And what I'll see here is, um, you know, the welcome thing from Visual Studio, and I'll see the the file explorer here on the um, on the left side, and it'll be empty, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a brand new HTML file. So I'll call it index.html, and in here I'll set up the basic HTML tags and things. So I'll do the head tag. I'll do the title tag. I'll add the body tag here. Okay. To make this project simple, I think I'm going to put um, all of the code inside this one file here. So everything will be in this one file. Later, maybe we'll break it off into separate files, but just as a beginner um, thing and just to get started, we'll put it all in one file. Okay. So at the top here, I'll add a style tag. And if I add any CSS styles, they'll go in here. And at the bottom of the body tag, I'll give myself a little space there, I'll add a script tag, 
Okay, so when we first start the project, what we're going to do is we're just going to write some code in here and we won't actually have anything in the body and we'll just check our, our code through the console in the browser. But when we get the code working pretty good here, then we'll start adding things into the body here and making them display. Okay, so we're not going to start with making things display on the screen. We're going to start with running code here first and see if our code works. And then when the code starts working, you know, then we can start making things display. Okay, so that's a pretty good start. Um, let me um, save all this and, um, and uh, get our code started, right? So uh, let's talk about variables and functions. So this is like the very basic... Uh, level of code. These are the two like primary things that you're going to use when you're building your programs. Okay, so variables are names that you can assign a value to and they can store a value. They're variable or they're called variables because they can change their value over time. Um, so you can, you know, assign new values to them or update their values, right? Variables are super useful and you can put any kind of value in them in JavaScript. So they can hold a number, they can hold a string, they can hold a, a reference to an array or an object. They can even hold a function. So you can assign a function to a variable in JavaScript. Okay. So what kind of variables do we need, right? Well, our shopping cart, if we remember here, it had a, a list of items. Right, so there's a list here. I got orange, frisbee, opinion, and new item, right? So we need to store that. That often is called a collection, and a collection, there's a couple different types that hold a collection, right? If we made a variable here um, and we said, you know, let, um, you know, um, thing equal orange, you know, and the orange was a dollar twenty nine, then um, this could hold one thing, right? Like thing could be one thing. But if I also wanted to have an apple and a frisbee and an opinion in there, it wouldn't really work, right? So this is not a collection, right? This is just a, a one value, okay? Um, a collection is a type of variable that can hold a, a list of things or a, or a you know a collection of things it's like a bag or a box or a shelf right rather than just one cubby hole right um, so in JavaScript we have a couple collections we have the array and we have the object okay so an array holds a collection of things okay a collection of values and it stores them at an in, each at an index so we reference each item with a number, like one, two, three, four, right? Actually, zero is the first item, okay? Um, whenever we define a variable in JavaScript, we're going to use one of three keywords. We're going to use cont or const, uh, var, or let, okay? I'm going to use the keyword const, and then I'm going to call this one um, cart, and this will be my variable. And I'll use the two square brackets to define the variable, okay? Or the, the array, right? So a const is a variable that can't change over time. In our case, we can add new things to the array, but we can't assign a new rate array to const or to cart, okay? So this might be a little confusing at first, but you'll see how it works later. But right now, it's perfectly okay for us to say that cart can't change, right? So we, that means we can't assign another array to it, but that doesn't mean we can't update this array or change the number of items in the array or add new items or delete items from the array. We just can't assign a new one, okay? So this is going to hold all of our items. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to write a couple functions, right? So I need a function, and we always write a function like this. We're going to say function, name, and then um, the curly brackets, right? And we actually follow the name with the parentheses, okay? So we give our functions a name, and hopefully the names are descriptive and describe like what that function does. So I'm going to say add item. So whenever you add an item to, a, to the cart, um, you'll call the add item function, okay? I'm going to make another function here called show items. And I'll follow the same rule. I'll follow it with the name with the parentheses and then with the curly brackets, okay? Um, JavaScript is case sensitive. 
So you can see that I've named this one with an uppercase I right in the same down here, but I started with a lowercase letter. So anytime I type these names, I'll have to type them in the same case, okay? You're not allowed to use special characters, so this is not a valid function name or variable name in JavaScript, okay? Um, underscore is okay. You can also use the dollar sign, but you can't use uh, the dot, you can't use the dash, you can't use the equal sign or the star or you know a bunch of the other characters, right? So pretty much we should stick with letters for our, our names, right? So I've got a, a function now to add an item. I've got a function to show the items, okay? So uh, let's, let's add some items to the cart. Okay, so you can see here in my shopping cart, every item is made up of a name and a price, right? <clears throat> every item also has a quantity, right, that tells me how many of this item are in the cart. The rest of this can be calculated from the price and the quantity. So if I take the quantity and multiply by the price, I'm going to get the total over here. And then if I add up all the totals, I can get the total at the bottom. Okay, so I don't I don't really need those as separate values because I can calculate them. Okay. So how do we add an item to the cart? Well, if you added an item to the cart, you'd probably need to tell us what the name is and what the price is, okay? We might also include the quantity, so you could add like five items to the cart, or one item, or three items. But for right now, why don't we just say if you add an item to the cart, it adds one, okay? And then we can just assume that, that the quantity will be one when we run this operation. When you put values here inside the parentheses, they're called parameters. Parameters are variables that are defined when the function is run. Okay, so when you call on the function, you'll be giving the value to these variables. Okay, so at the bottom here, I'm going to call on this function. It won't do anything yet because we haven't included any code within the, the code block here, right? But uh, if you wanted to say add item, you would actually, I think if I, if I do it this way, oh yeah, VS Code will help me out. It'll see add item takes a name, which can be any type and a price, which can be any type. So let's say I wanted to add an apple to my cart, and the price of an apple is 99 cents. And then maybe I want to do it again. I want to say, but this time I'll add an orange, and the price of an orange is $1.29, okay? And we could add some other things, but just, this will run our code for, for testing, right? So if I've got this so far, I'm when I um, put the name of a function and then put the parentheses at the end of it, it invokes the function or it calls on the function. It runs the code that you've defined here within the, um, the curly braces, okay? So here, I've invoked the add item function twice, right? So I've defined the function up here, and it didn't do anything until I invoked it down here. So here it, I ran it once, and then here I ran it a second time, okay? So now we just need to decide, like, what happens inside here, okay? So an array can hold multiple items, and we'll, we'll see how that works in a moment. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to add an item to the cart that includes the name, the price, and a quantity. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll say um, cart dot push, and push is a method of array. So anytime something is an array, we can call push on it, and that adds a new item or it pushes an item into the cart or into the array, right, <clears throat> at the end of the array. Okay, so what do I want to put in there, right? Well, I could put the name in there, right? And then let's say I want to show the items, right? So what I'll do over here is I'll say, let's print them to the, to the console. Now the console is like a, a debugging tool, so you don't see it here, but if you um, go to your browser and you choose inspect, if you're in Safari, you won't see inspect unless you go to preferences and then go to advanced and then check this box right here that says show develop menu in menu bar. And then you should see this menu bar now, right? Our menu item. And if you right click on the page, you'll see inspect element. And 
in here and it may arrange this sometimes it puts the the inspector on the side or the bottom or in a new window you can kind of control that with these buttons right if you go in here and you go to console then you'll see down here my my code is is printing some things out to the console like it said frisbee and orange and apple right and what we're going to do is we're going to print out the value of our cart in show items and we'll print it to the console here so our program will just be blank in the browser for now but everything that happens will appear in the console so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to console and say print or just console.log cart okay and uh, now i'll open up my program index html in my browser here right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go find my file I put it on the desktop in this folder right here and maybe I'll um, I'll just drag it actually I think I can drag it to the bar here actually you know what I should have done is let me do it this way I'll uh, I think if I drag it to the plus sign here it'll make a new tab so that way I have both tabs right so now I'm gonna remember we're not gonna see anything here but if I go to the the inspector I'll see in the console that it says uh, it doesn't say anything wait a minute oh you know why of course it doesn't say anything I added the items to the cart but I never called show items so let's call that right so I'll say um, you know show items and then I'll run my code here by refreshing the browser and you can see that the the square brackets here it says apple comma orange right so this is what my array looks like and if I added a new element to the array here an opinion and it was uh, worth uh, two cents right when I refresh here you'll see that I've got an opinion in there now currently the array shows one element for each item in the array and it's a string and a string is always in quotation marks and has you know any number of characters between the quotation marks and this shows the apple the orange and the opinion so it's showing the name but it it's kind of lost the price right so so that's pretty good for now you should try that out and we'll continue this in the next video um, I wanted to just try and keep these short to, to make them easier to digest, right? But what we'll do in the next video is we'll we'll set this up so it can, can so our our array can keep track of the name, the price, and the quantity all together, and then we'll talk about how we can log all three of the items to the console together. Okay, so thanks for watching.